the Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians, the wonderful Senator Jacinta Nampajimpa Price. I have to say, Jacinta Price, we have missed you here on Credlin. I'm delighted to have your company as always. Um, when I read those findings, that accords with my sense of goodwill amongst Australians for better outcomes for Aboriginal people. I think I disagree with Nicholas Biddle that, that those sorts of results mean uh, voters want a voice. I think they're saying they want Aboriginal people to have a say, sure, but they want the voice to be people like you in the parliament mm. um, in a way that all Australians are represented and we're not divided by race. What do you think? Oh, look, I'd have to agree, Peter. I think the conversations that I have, the overflowing comments and emails and correspondence that I receive suggest to me that Australians certainly did not want the voice uh, proposal that the Albanese government had put on the table, uh, but they, they do want ways forward, particularly for our most marginalised. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't agree that they are seeking a sort of another voice model but perhaps more so that this government should be listening uh, to those voices that they completely ignore, who, who, know, who have answers to a lot of mm. the problems that currently exist already. That, I mean, that, that's how I see it. They want a practical way forward uh, for Indigenous Australians and no more separatism. What's disappointing is, you know, in that immediate week after the referendum result, the Prime Minister basically dodged any accountability. He wouldn't tell us if the Makarata Treaty Commission was coming off the table, given the voice result. He, he dodged and hid behind the fact that Aboriginal leaders were in a period of mourning. And then obviously he was overseas and world events intervened. But surely Australians have got a right to know, is he still pushing on with the treaty? Yeah, look, absolutely. And I think, you know, the states are now showing that they're a bit wobbly on their legs with regard to negotiating treaties, which is fair enough. Uh, we shouldn't be negotiating treaties with our own citizens. And I think it's a bit of a dog's breakfast if uh, the Prime Minister decides to move forward uh, with this negotiation process. Uh, again, people want action. They want action now. Uh, they don't want in the form of treaties, uh, this, this idea of truth-telling. Uh, we want the truth to be told, uh, basically, with a lot of the issues that our marginalised face. Oh, I'll get to some of those issues in a moment. There's a particular a court case involving young people. But I know you've had a, a lot to say in the parliament about land councils. We've seen today the Burnerong Land Council, which is a great part of southern Victoria, it's been placed into administration in September because there's been an investigation of alleged fraud in excess of $150,000 and a whole lot of allegations of mismanagement and corruption. Now, you're going to say to me, I know, this doesn't surprise you, does it? Oh, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, it's, it's another very um, adamant reason as to why we need an audit uh, of the structures that currently exist to determine who's actually um, appropriately uh, dispersing funds or uh, using funds to provide practical outcomes uh, and who's not doing that. The Australian people want to know. Certainly those that miss out are those that these land councils are supposed to serve. They're the ones that miss out uh, when this sort of behaviour uh, is found. And there's, I don't believe that there's enough in terms of deterring this kind of behaviour because we see it repeated over and over again. I think an audit uh, would provide the opportunity to look at the extent of the issue uh, more broadly, but also mm. what measures should be put in place to deter this sort of thing in the future. And look, as, as was revealed in the whole uh, debate about The Voice, you know, you've got almost $40 billion coming out of governments around the country year in, year out, for Aboriginal people, programs and individual funding. And of course we know, well, I've been out to your community, Little Sisters and elsewhere, it doesn't hit the ground, does it? So where does it go? Where does it go? Well, that's exactly right. We need to understand where it goes and we need to reinvest it uh, where it should be providing outcomes. We also need to look at economic independence for Indigenous Australians and move away from this separatist model, uh, you know, you go out to a remote community, if you want to see socialism at play, go out there. It's happening before us. There's dependence uh, on government, on welfare, and we need to create economic opportunity out in those communities and start treating them like small country towns instead of socialist enclaves. Mm. 
Uh, but, you know, there's a whole raft of things that I'd love to get my teeth into going forward. Just quickly, we've seen a High Court, sorry, a High Court, a New South Wales Supreme Court decision that allowed two Aboriginal kids or, or lately recognised as Aboriginal kids to be adopted by the long-term foster parents. The Aboriginal mother has said, you know, the white fellows won't understand culture. The court said, look, we're quite happy with the situation. We think they will. We also hear today an 18-year-old man has been allowed also to be adopted by his long-term foster parents. Um, surely, are we turning the tide here, Jacinta? Are we starting to see that it's got to be about what's in the best interest of the child rather than Aboriginal culture? Oh, look, I'm relieved to see these sorts of determinations where the best interest of the child has been put uh, before uh, the ideological notion that their culture and connection to country is more important than upholding their human rights. These children, finally, the 18-year-old has been fighting um, to be adopted by those that have loved him and cared for him and nurtured him. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the younger uh, children, it was only recently that they found out uh, that there was any Aboriginal ancestry. So, uh, you know, how can you argue that it's a cultural thing? The only people I know that are living are still connected to traditional culture are those in remote communities in the Northern Territory, Western Australia and other places. But what we need to do is create well-rounded adults who can find out for themselves more about who they are when they are in a stable position as adults who are um, got great lives, contributing to society effectively, not gone down the path of incarceration or alcohol, uh, substance abuse and addiction uh, because they've been left in dysfunction. Uh, I'm glad to see the tables are turning yeah. and this, this is a great outcome going forward. See, I told you we missed you. I know my audience is cheering. I could hear them cheering right now. Just enterprise, great to have your company as always.